Look, you <laughs> do you see how thick these glasses are? These these were my glasses. They were to oh oh Lord Jesus. These were the glasses. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. This is part two of my story time. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out part one of me waking up blind. Be sure to join me on my journey and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Fearless Butterfly. You can also follow me on Facebook, The Fearless Butterfly, and Instagram, The Fearless Butterfly 01. I will leave everything down in the description box below. Let's get right into the video. So before my surgery, I had to get medical clearance from my primary care doctor to make sure everything was okay. I had to get my EKG done, make sure my heart was okay, all my blood work, you know, all the good stuff. And the same day that I found out that I was blind, my doctor asked me which eye did I want to do first. And I had to send my left eye. So that's the eye that was done first. Just like any other surgeries you have, you can't eat after 12 prior. So I couldn't eat anything. And being that I'm diabetic, my mom had to call and ask, like, you know, what if her blood sugar goes low? What do I do? And I told her to give me a teaspoon of sugar. I'm like, that's weird. I never heard that before. So they said, yeah, give her a teaspoon of sugar if her blood sugar drops. So I was just hoping and praying that my blood sugar didn't drop. The next morning when I went for surgery, the nurse called me in. She prepped me. I had to take out my piercings. I had to tie up my hair. They put some weird cap on my head. They covered my feet up, my shoes up, and I had to put my arms in some weird, some weird coat thing. After that, she checked my blood sugar, checked my pressure, sat there, and I was I was anxious and nervous and excited all at the same time because you know when you hear surgery, you're like, all right, I'm gonna be sleep the whole time. Yeah, I had a rude awakening. Anesthesiologist came and. He tried to stick me, give me an IV, but I am a hard stick. Like, it is hard for anybody to get a vein. In the hospital, they give me a, a pick line or they stick it in my neck or my feet. He came, I'm, I, I warned him, I'm like, you know, I'm a hard stick. He stuck me three times, got nothing. On the fourth time he got it, that's because he went like close to my knuckles and there's like veins there. But it hurts bad. It hurts really bad. So I'm like, you know what, let me suck it up. He got it in. So after he got the IV in, the nurse came and she guided me to the room, laid me down. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to get some anesthesia. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm not sure if it was local anesthesia, whatever it was. It just, it relaxed me, it made me drowsy, but I was still awake. It wasn't enough of it to put me to sleep. Doctor, he comes in the room and he numbs my eye. Let that sit for maybe two minutes and he injected my eye with something to put my eye to sleep. A few more minutes went by, he injected some more. Then after that, he was like, move your eye for me. He just wanted to make sure that my eye was at fully sleep. And I wouldn't feel anything. Who wants to have eye surgery and they feel everything that's going on in their eye? Not me. Once he had the green light and he seen that my eye was completely asleep, he proceeded to drain the blood from my eye and to reattach my retinals. I'm not going to lie. I did yell during the surgery. I wasn't sure if it was just me being dramatic or does knowing that I'm having surgery on my eye, I I could have been being dramatic or it could have just been me wanting more meds. He drained the blood and reattached my retinal. He then put silicone oil in my left eye to protect it from further damage. The surgery was done, the nurse guided me to the recovery room and she kept repeating herself. She said, keep your head down, keep your head down. I'm like, why do I have to keep my head down? 
being that my doctor put silicone oil in my eyes, it was going to take up to 10 days for the oil to set in my eye in place. So I had to keep my head down literally for 10 days. The next morning, I had a follow up with Dr. Feig and he took the patch off my eye. And then, you know, he said, make sure you keep your head down. He prescribed me pain meds and he told me that my eyes going to be really red from the blood and everything I'm going to be sore and then before we left there we scheduled for my left eye surgery the following week so the week after same procedure same instructions same routine to keep my head down because there was silicone oil placed in my eye being that I had to keep my head down and my eyes were really really sensitive to sunlight to anything that wouldn't go outside I was in so much pain the pain was different when I when he did the left eye I was still feeling it when he did the right eye but the right eye wasn't as bad as the left eye the left eye Ooh, child. And after both patches were removed, I you know I had several other doctor's appointments. So when I went to see my gastric surgeon who implanted the gastric pacemaker, he seen me. He was like, "What happened to your eyes?" And my mom was telling him we were out on the street. This is now past the ten days. We were out on the street, and people would be looking at me like. Yo, like, what happened to her? Everything was blurry. I still couldn't see. It took time for my eyes to heal. I believe we had follow-up appointments every two weeks with my eye doctor to make sure everything was okay, make sure the pressure in my eye was okay. And then he prescribed me glasses. And then I started seeing little by little, but I hated my glasses. It made my eyeballs look huge. Like, my eyeballs is big, like... I didn't know they were that big until now and I'm looking at pictures like whoa there was some like big 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 ass glasses like they were just like my eyeballs are huge and a few weeks after the surgery I got used to my glasses I noticed that I started having double vision so I would try to look out one eye because a lot of the times everything was double so I'm like okay I need to look out of one eye to get used to the double vision so then when we went to the doctor, I told him, I'm saying, you know, Dr. Five, I'm having double vision. And he was like, oh, we can fix that. I'm like, Lord, like what can't y'all fix? So then he prescribed me glasses. I had glasses with prism. So now I had to get a new set of glasses. These glasses were so thick. Oh, my God. I did not want to wear them. Hold on, let me show y'all. Look, you <laughs> do you see how thick these glasses are? These these were my glasses. They were to oh oh Lord Jesus. These were the glasses. I believe this one was the right one, and this one was the left one. But these these were the glasses, and I also noticed after the surgery my left. Right. My right eye doesn't open as wide as my left eye. Because if I'm looking at you, you can see, like, it'd be like, open your eyes wide. I'm like, I can't. This is the widest that my right eye opens. And I also notice that my eye wanders around. So when I talk, people know I blink a lot because when I'm talking, my eye just, it wanders. I'm going to show you. Look. You see, it it moves. It moves. This one moves a little bit, but not that much. But this one moves all the way over here. So, like, I'm still looking at myself in the camera, but I have to blink, and then it's back to normal. So, when my mom be talking to me, I'd be like, yes, Sandra. And it does it by itself. I don't force it. Like, if I'm not, like, focused on something in front of me, and if you don't have my attention, my eye just does what it wants to. I am able to see in the daytime. I do wear both contacts and my glasses. At nighttime, 
I can't see past sunset. That's why I'm very protective of who I let into my space. If you don't know my situation, if you don't know what's going on with my eyesight, I'm gonna feel comfortable hanging out with you. So that's why I'm very protective of my space. Only yet my family and my handful of friends. When my friends wanna go out, I don't have to worry about anything because they already know what it is. But if you're someone new and you wanna hang out, I'm like, listen, it's gonna have to be before a certain time because you know I really can't see that well. This last year is is gonna be a year I had the silicone oil removed from my left eye because the pressure in my left eye was skyrocket high. It was too dangerous to keep it in my eye. Dr. Fi removed the silicone oil on my left eye and that eye is okay. But the pressure in this eye goes up and down, up and down. I do take eye drops to lower the pressure. Now my right eye, I still have silicone oil in that eye. I do want to have it removed, but as of right now, if it's not broke, I ain't going to try to fix it. My right eye is okay. There's The pressure's fine in that eye. I have no worries. And... Overall, I look back and I'm like, wow. I didn't think that I would be able to see again, go out again. I was really depressed and it took a while for me to bounce back from that place. I hated I hated everything about being in the in the dark. It was it wasn't nice. I wasn't happy. But I also appreciate it because it allowed me to appreciate my new life, everything that's coming my way, the blessings that's coming my way. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Fearless Butterfly. You can follow me on Instagram, The Fearless Butterfly 01. You can also follow me on Facebook, The Fearless Butterfly. Be sure to watch part one of this two part video. Thank you, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Mwah.